of our next session i would like to invite uh, dr prabha lama to conduct this session of paper presentation and uh, before we start i would like to give a brief introduction about dr prabha lama prabha lama is an associate professor and head department of the humanities and social sciences grafikara to deemed university from dehradun uttarakhand dr prabha lama dr prabha lama uh i think there should be some technical difficulty uh with dr prabha yes here we have dr prabha lama who has joined us thank you dr prabha very very much honored with your presence doctor doctor prabha lama yes good day everybody thank you thank you sir thank you good afternoon ma'am good afternoon we are very much honored with your presence today uh Uh, we uh, i invite you to uh, take over the stage thank you sir. thank you ma'am welcome sir i have a, a small request it is uh, totally unforgivable of me asking like this but i have a, a small request to uh, place to all the presenters i know you would have uh, prepared really hard and uh, diligently and you have been presenting so beautifully and for the pre presenters who are going to present now i have another small request for you please with the with the, with the consideration of the time constraint i i request you to limit the duration of your presentation within 10 minutes within 10 minutes i know it is totally unfair of me to place such a big request but uh, considering the the limitation of time i i uh, i sincerely request i humbly request everyone to uh, be considerate when you are presenting the paper thank you so much thank you ma'am welcome sir yes do we have somebody moderating the session or we can start off with yes ma'am uh, you can actually uh, call the first person Okay. Um, P. R. Princeton and uh, Dr. A. Imagining Jimmy. Okay, we can start with um, uh, Princeton. P. R. Princeton. Yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. I'm very happy to join you in this session. So my discussion topic is that of revolutionary of dystopian society in Susan A. Collins' The Hunger Games trilogy. Ah, uh, it focuses upon that of a rebellion. uh in one which commits against others in a first state in a first state how a individual feels uh that is rebellion is different aggressive battle structure by a group of people who are trying to challenge the political system in their country daisy freedom may be ultimate goal in the minds of the hearts of the revolutionaries the ultimate aim of a rebel is to give get freedom from the hands of the powerful a uh, government or from the fans of the powerful personality to get the freedom that's maybe the ultimate aim therefore uh is assistance and one more factor that which comes right there is that of assistant they have to survive in the world for the survival they have to rebel for their survival and uh, that can be seen from my topic that of hunger games trilogy by that of susanna collins you can find and uh, the protagonist katniss how she supports in the hands okay uh, excuse uh, excuse yes, me princeling uh, uh, would you like to share some ppt so that i could have an image i could see what oh. ever the your work is on is it possible no ma'am so could share your screen or something so that no, i could have I something i haven't prepared a ppt thing related okay. with this so you're comfortable okay. speaking that way right yeah yeah okay. that's continue okay. continue continue okay thank you so the protagonist katniss how she just faced the difficulties that we can see so from the hunger games trilogy by that of susanna collins well the protagonist uh, who lives in a poor section of panama under a totalitarian government there will be 12 districts and katniss will be in the 12th district 
the name of the district is panama and starting stages the totalitarian government suppressed all the districts and the districts are been separated into separate separate sessions and there is no proper right and there is no freedom for these individuals who are living in these districts catnis is one among them and how the protagonist trying to come up in their life trying to rebel okay how to get her freedom that's a basic thing uh one by one we will be seeing that catnis first act of disobedience grows out of necessity for for survival is against the government she is against the government for that the inequality between the districts is maintained by the capital um what did the capital do uh, they have separated the districts into different section they are not giving them freedom that's a basic thing that this did and catnick uh, tried fought for her that of uh, freedom something like this succeed in keeping her family alive to keep her family alive she did this leads her to hunt outside the district fence which is illegally activity okay without they had a strong regulation rules and regulations so right there so patni starting to uh, destroy the rules and regulations she started to hunt outside that of the particular place the first thing as a ripple she did this later uh catnis act of silent rebel in starting stages of her life she just acted as a silent rebel without protesting without moving forward okay showing her rebel and later in an active manner she started to perform in front of the government okay next in the eyes of her district catnis has become a revolutionary standing against against the capital not permitting them to take a 11 year old child the later we can find catnis won't sister there will be a lottery game in that game the death is that of the penalty those the candidates those who win they will be getting the rewards and the rest candidate they will be facing death that's the game and for that her for her own sister catney took the responsibility leaving her sister behind and later moreover the government considered the act of catney as a revolution entering in the hunger games a crucial moment for catney as her ability to become a model for social change she have to do some changes in the society starting stages she is rebelling for herself later she is rebelling for her own sister and let right now she is rebelling for her society she is trying to bring lots of changes she is trying to give get freedom for her society and the mumpers or that are sit that are number district toll yeah in the initial movement catney is only concerned with protecting her sister starting stages that's what her intention is all about later catney is begin to realize her strength behind her action because of that catney's revolt for her own place district toll where will be finding she is rebelling in district toll her actions are only seen by small number of people starting stage when she was revolt there is rebelling only her people and her sister and the rest candidates know came to know about catney's how she is rebelling as time progresses there is a broad band that of it has been that of the game has been displayed through the of uh, uh in the tvs and tv channels because of that catnis gets she just got fame a lots of people from different districts came to know about catnis and her rebelling tendency and the way, the way that which she became all these things that the the district people they came to know about that of catnis we'll be finding catnis devet uh, develops her survival skills for the game but not she actively works to change the power of catable throw the small skill of survival her survival shows that she was personally is able to overcome power which was made by the capital but catnis would not be able to connect that move to change the social system catnis approach of different capital power is an important aspect in creating a social rebellion character so there is one more thing that which is right there uh the during the time of the game no one should have a uh, relationship with their father they should never show a relationship of love friendship and their of uh, but catnis they break that set of rules with the okay intention with their character she just changed that set of rules and in their of the program she just revealed she is uh, loving a character and she just revealed the name of the character in front of their of the capitals that's the most important thing that which catnis done does in their of the thing 
and further you'll be finding that um, that of the capital had a thing that is a uh, mocking jay a bird name the cop uh, yeah, the mocking jay and that a jabbery jay the capital engineer the birds for their purpose for controlling the rebels in the starting stages they had developed a bird that's known as their mocking jay to develop the to keep an eye on the all the districts all the 12 districts and to get the control of them they developed a bird name as their mocking jay as time progresses that of course entirely changed uh, the own bird started to say lies against them okay that of rebelling against by spreading lies now this emerged bird is considered as a symbol of rebellion the bird started to state rebellion it indirectly states that catnies along with the people of district toll and other persons who are right there in the game started to rebel against the capital that of everything changed okay a person experience dissatisfaction in her, in his or circumstances if they are able to stand up for individuals in the society can react anything and the rules of the society if a person needs anything okay he can rebel for that okay he can just stand up to the task he can achieve anything in this world that's the whole thing about that of uh, considering the timing that's the whole thing about that of uh, the topic thank you guys Okay, Princeton. Uh, uh, can I ask you a question? Am I allowed to do so? Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Okay. Uh, uh, why did you actually go for this? I mean, why your research paper is based on uh, such a protagonist? What was something that attracted you? Have you read um, Mahashweta Devi's a... Dopadi? Have you read Mahashweta no. Devi's Dopadi? No. Have you read the character? Some way, I can find the, both the characters very identical. Okay, you can uh, uh, put your points here. Uh, why especially this topic? Uh, it's a trilogy, so I do find that okay, it's an interesting one. The character resembles the same character. How it begins from the starting stages. What are the changes that just took place in the character? I just read through the thing, and I do find it interesting. That's the main reason I just took this. You found it that interesting. That episode, and I yeah, okay. I do find that interesting. Okay, fine. Good enough. Lots of compliments. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Putting it up so well. Okay. okay Maybe move on to the next one. Maybe move on to uh, the other. I can see uh, Miss Anju Devadasa here, Shafa Kashmiri, Rina Justin, Kajal Pudar, Monica Jha. Ma'am, uh, may I please? Uh, yes. Pardon? actually i think uh, yes. you'll be um, uh, given the list of the participants in your class and uh, the next person will be anju devadas from okay fine sir thank you so much Marjan. thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you anju can continue please uh, am i audible yes anju you can continue thank you ma'am uh, good evening all uh, respected chair and other members of the panel uh, I'm Anju Devdas. I'm a research scholar of Marivanas College. Uh, my research supervisor is Nilka Sharma, associate professor, Department of English, Marivanas College. So the topic of my presentation. Uh, before uh, moving on with my presentation, shall I uh, share my screen? Yes, Anju, I would appreciate that. Is it visible, ma'am? Ma'am, is it visible? Yes, Anju, it's completely visible. You can continue. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, so the topic of my presentation is 50 Shades of Stockholm Syndrome, Romanticization of Alpha Males and Abusive Relationships in Contemporary Erotic Romances and Films. So uh, I should give you an introduction about uh, the erotic romances, how it has passed over from the popular mills and bones and then we had the harlequin romance novels and then we had the body stripper regency era novels and now we have the contemporary erotic and young adult romance so the 20th century it has witnessed a lot of changes um, 
when it comes to romantic fiction and it usually targets women readers and all these novels they usually uh, portray a kind of a patriarchal ideology and also they have an equal relationship between men and women in society so they are kind of manifestations of the prejudice and internalized misogyny that we see in our society so uh, there is this dichotomous representation of hegemonic or toxic masculinity or machismo and also we have the subjugated femininity which is which we can visibly see in uh, erotic and also dark romance novels and also films which leads to the romanticization and glorification of abusive relationships and also traumatic bonding and stockholm syndrome so even uh, with the emergence of feminism which uh, which advocates the equal equality of men and women uh, in our society the modern and also the contemporary post millennial romance fiction and films uh, we we see some certain change uh, with the emergence of this feminist ideology certain novels and also films they they have adopted this feminist ideology of treating women and uh men both equally but at the same time certain narratives they are turned out to be perpetually progressive narratives that dismantle the autonomous identities and subjectivity that requires the he heroine to be swept off her feet so even though they have some kind of ideology which treats them equal but at the same time there are um there are um, narrative facets which will be dismantling the agency and individuality of women so the paper it attempts to demystify the influence of these stereotypical gender politics in erotic fiction and young adult fiction and also in films uh, and how it influences the psyche of women and how it distorts and shapes the way women define themselves so i'll be taking into consideration some of the narratives in order to determine how contemporary representations uh, romanticize and glorify abusive relationships stalking kidnapping traumatic bonding and also the psychiatric condition of stockholm syndrome and also uh, i'll be trying to delineate how the dynamics of abuse and problematic messaging uh, how it privileges the alpha male and the masculine power which leads to the suppression of women so uh, uh, when we talk about erotic and dark romances usually they are novels which have strong and explicit sexual interaction uh, which is uh, disguised as a love story where we have a full story and also character growth, uh, growth and also relationship development and uh, which will have the strong and explicit explicit sexual content so it always follows the conventions of a romance it has a happy ending and all optimistic and happy ending but it is graphic gra graphic and sexual content so um, i argue that these dark and erotic romances they that utilize this explicit content they involve usually uh, sexual assault sexual abuse sexual exploitation which leads to the normalization of violence against women and also the propagation of sexism uh, discrimination and also gender stereotyping so uh, let me give you a brief understanding of the terms uh, alpha male and hyper masculinity so hyper masculinity is uh, determined by the exaggeration of traditionally masculine traits and behavior so they uh, it is usually associated with sexual and physical aggression towards uh, women so alpha male is a personality who is described as arrogant insensitive narcissistic and also competitive who's also at the same time insecure and might resort to physical and sexual violence so uh, alpha males usually legitimizes men's dominant position in society and they will be justifying the subordination of uh, the common male population and women now we see certain tropes in dark and erotic romances so these dark and erotic romances usually they deal with graphic and reprehensible topics such as sex slaves then we have abusive relationships manipulation non consensual sex then we have dark topics all these dark topics are there so they usually deal with stalking and abduction then we have rape fantasies and torture then uh, uh, non sex non consensual sex and also dubious consent where we we can not say whether the consent was given then uh, it usually deals with sex trafficking and sex sexual slavery and also bdsm based plots where uh, with extremely limited boundaries and also they usually uh, portray violence and also heroes or heroines who are assassins mob members serial killers and everything so uh, these kind of uh, uh, these kind of 
dark and rom uh, erotic romances they are usually considered as taboo uh, works but it is mostly targeted for women now i have to uh, briefly talk about stockholm syndrome so it's a psychological phenomenon uh, which came in 1973 when certain hostages four hostages were held captive uh, during a bank robbery in stockholm sweden so after six days of captivity when the hostages were um, rescued by the police uh, they 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 had an alliance with the captor they were very much in sympathy with the cap captor so this kind of a irrational and paradoxical psychological response wherein a captive begins to identify with the captor and um, as well as with their agenda and demands during captivity as a survival strategy is termed as Stockholm syndrome. So this is kind of a flight or fight response where you, you find sympathetic feelings towards your captors. So it is um, the opposite of fear or dis uh, disdain. Uh, which usually uh, an outside person might feel. So when we look at from an outsider's perspective, we might feel fear and disdain, but the from the perspective of the victim, they will feel senti uh, sympathy and also a kind of, um, uh, uh, they, they see it as a survival strategy. So uh, according to D.L. Graham, uh, the theorist who, who talks about Stockholm syndrome, uh, she has defined, she has talked about the four situational factors that serve as a precursor to Stockholm syndrome. So there are a uh, perceived threat to survival, the captive's perception of small kindness from the captor within a context of terror, isolation from other perspectives, and also a perceived inability to escape. All these factors will be contributing to the development of Stockholm syndrome. So survival instinct is at the core of Stockholm syndrome. When a captive, uh, when a person is held as a hostage or a captive, they develop a kind of a survival instinct which lead them to please the captor so in force when they are living in forced dependence with their captor they have to rely on everything uh, from the captor so they will be interpreting all small acts of kindness uh, as good treatment rather than as horrible treatment so it's very very much closely associated with the fond response which is a trauma response uh, which leads to people pleasing so we have several young adult and also erotic novels which talks about uh, kidnapping, Stockholm syndromes, abusive relationship, um, uh, non-consensual uh, sex, etc. So we have Captive in the Dark by C.J. Roberts. We have Tears of Death. We have Asking for It and the Siren, Haven, Comfort Object, uh, Twist Me and also Born Sinner. So I'll be looking at certain number of works in order to study uh, how um, Stockholm syndrome and also alpha male representations are there in erotic and also uh, young adult romances. So the first work I have taken is Captive in the Dark and also Pepper Winter's uh, Tess of Tears. So in the first novel, Captive in the Dark, which was published in the year 2011, it was written by uh, C.J. Roberts. It was the debut novel and it's about, it's a dark and twisted romance. It follows the story of a boy who meets a girl and he kidnaps this girl and then he trains and sells this girl as a sex slave. So it has this repulsive theme such as uh, which includes uh, um, abduction, beating, sexual violence, rape and overall humiliation of another human being. So we have the protagonist who's 18 year old, Olivia Rius. So she wakes up uh, in a very strange place and she's blindfolded and bound. And she's represented as a very young and beautiful and naive and innocent and willful to a fault person. So, and she is, she is held captive by a person called Caleb and he demands her to call him as master. So she's very much frightened, but at the same time, she has this kind of feeling towards a, a, a unwelcome attraction towards Caleb. So this in this kind of novel where we portray controlling or abusive men um, as paradigms of romance in such novels, they portray uh, these these men as paradigms of romance. It can desensitize and also um, desensitize the readers to ob obsessive and also abusive behavior. So such kind of forced captivity, stalking, these dangerous behaviors are mistaken as passionate love in this dark erotica novels. So these works, these kind of works can transform the psyche of women who read these and it can shape the way women think about themselves. And also such um, a similar novel uh, in the same spirit we can call uh, it is Tess of Tears, which is the first book of Pepper Winters in the Mo Monster in the Dark uh, series.
series, it also follows a similar narrative which tells the tale of the eponymous Jess, who's drunk, transported, and ultimately sold to a man called uh, Qui, Q. And also, we have another novel called Asking for It by Lila Pace, which is published in the year 2015. It, it is a very explicit and graphic adult romance with fantasies of non-consensual sex. So it is a story of Vivian Charles who fantasizes uh, about a uh, who has a rape fantasy and even though she was a survivor of a sexual assault she feels shame that she has this kind of a romantic uh, rape fantasy and also we have another uh, the the male protagonist is jonah marx who has this uh, tendency to to um, uh, to take someone by force so there develops a kind of beneficial relationship between both where they they satisfy these fantasies. So uh, this is kind of an abusive relationship when we look at from outsider perspective and it utilizes this domination and submissive strategies in order to demean the women, women's identity, individuality and agency. So such novels, they promote a soft porn culture that degrades and also humiliates the female gender. So such these novels, they, they have overtly misogynistic messages at the heart of romance genre. Now, the, I have taken into consideration two films. I have talked about the two uh, novels I've taken and also two films. The first one is Fifty Shades of Grey. So it is an eponymous erotic no uh, romance novel uh, by E.L. E.L. James. So this is an adaptation of this that, of that particular novel and it tells the story, the romantic relations between uh, Anastasia Steele and also Christian Grey. So she's a shy and awkward college graduate and he's a business magnate. And this, the novel and the film both features uh, sexual dominance, submission, uh, sadism, and also masochism. And also it is a portrayal of master, slave, gender roles, and also it promotes a kind of unequal social status. So in the both the fictional and also the filmic representation, you see a kind of romanticization of the, uh, of the abuse and also how the victim is sexually victimized. And also uh, there is a misrepresentation of the BD BDSM lifestyle, which uses consent um, uh, in, order to, in order to perform any kind of sexual act. But in this particular novel, it is being misrepresented and the caretaker or the dominant person, he acts as an uh, oppressor and he uses coercion and also manipulation in order to make the victim consent. So these novels, usually this, the film, it promotes torture as sexually gratifying and also it normalizes domestic violence and Stockholm syndrome. So it kind of sends a message to men that ma masochism is what women want. And Anastasia is uh, sexually satisfied by Grace overwhelming power. You know, so this kind of a tendency, there is a kind of a um, tendency to believe that uh, women really want uh, masochism being performed by men. So these kind of representation, it kind of reinforce the gender specific behavioral standards that perpetuate gender discrimination, where they portray men as being strong and tough and women as soft and pliant and also very submissive. So here in this particular film, we see Christian as a, a representative or the embodiment of uh, hegemonic masculinity who strive for superiority and control while Anastasia is portrayed as traditional and uh, a, a representative of subjugated femininity. So uh, Anastasia is a victim of Stockholm syndrome as well because uh, she behaves like a battered woman, uh, 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 wo a victim of intimate partner violence because she, uh, she tries to please her abuser, she yearns for the happy times and also she feels trapped and also disempowered. Covered. So this romance is an, is an illusion that masks eroticized violence and uh, traumatic bonding. The next film I have taken for study is 365 Days, which is based on uh, Blanka Lipinska's Polish erotic novel. Uh, and it follows the story of Laura, uh, a young woman uh, who falls into, uh, who was abducted by uh, a Sicilian mob mobster whose name is Massimo. So he imprisons her and also imposes a kind of, uh, and he gives her a period of 365 days to fall in love with him. So this movie, it is disguised as a steamy modern romance, but it justifies abusive relationship between the protagonist. And also it repeatedly takes away the autonomy of the protagonist, Laura, and also um, uh, uh, by, by romantic gestures and also the seemingly kind behaviors, um, Massimo is portrayed as a good character instead of the abusive character. 
so this all uh, this film also just like a uh, 50 shades of gray it also uh, eroticizes the brutal reality of sex trafficking kidnapping coercion then uh, stockholm syndrome rape and also intimate partner violence so this kind of uh, it is a politically objectionable objectionable film and it it kind of perpetuate uh, perpetuate the fact that sexual stereotyping of women um uh, uh women are being treated as property of men and also um uh, they are meant for sexual context uh, conquest and also uh, it glorify abuse culture so we have the sex uh, the hyper masculine and also the alpha male uh, massimo and he he performs a kind of abhorrent and also despicable behavior towards laura he sedates her he imprisons her he sexually assaults her and also he manipulates and exploits her by using abusive tactics like gaslighting coercion reproductive uh, coercion uh, he exploits her financially physically sexually and also digitally so all the small acts of kindness he shows towards laura it is being considered as a positive reinforcement and kindness by laura so uh, here also we see a kind of um, um, uh, uh, stockholm syndrome and also coercive behavior and also um, all kinds of um, degradation of women so i conclude by stating that all these novels and films which talk about um, uh, which talk about the uh, the degradation and also the humiliation of women it can impact the, the psyche of women who read it and also it can uh, it can have a very um, uh, humiliating effect on the women's psyche when they read it and also it can impact their uh, understanding and also their um, um, and also um, their understanding of women how they perceive their identity agency and also individuality thank you so the the concluding statement suggests that this was the reason we took up such a challenging and very innovative uh, title right yeah in the form of research paper okay yeah. uh, i am working on abusive relationships uh, for my phd that's good now just a very small question is there any yes. difference between uh, being a fascist and a difference between hype masculinity as uh, you mentioned in the research paper is there any hairline difference or you feel that both are same um being a when it comes to yeah i understood the question now so uh when i would it comes really to, appreciate uh, excuse me i would really appreciate if uh, all of you could li literally you know switch on your cameras at least during the question and answer round only during the question and answer round if it's possible if it's if it's comfortable with you if you uh, feel my like camera is defective otherwise okay, I, okay. I would have done it that's okay yeah. that's okay yeah. yes uh, miss anju you can continue with the answer so when it comes to a fascist uh, he or she can be authoritative and also with some kind of a dictatorial power and who can suppress all all everyone irrespective of gender class and culture every he, he or she can do that but when it comes to an alpha male or uh, or a hyper masculine uh, uh, personality uh, we usually refer it to the male gender because we have this perception that our our society here men are the dominant gender and women are the subordinate gender so there is a suppression and oppression of women in our society which is very much visible so when it comes to alpha male they they have this dominant uh, kind of aggressive kind of nature which they will be uh, showcasing towards the women who are very much in uh, relation to them uh well well answered anju uh, Thank you. can you just uh, uh, just in your own words explain uh, some stereotypical gender complexities that our society particular uh, our country uh, you know uh, society our society uh, encounters the common uh, ones since you've done a lot of work on this research paper itself seems very uh, impactful so you must be having good suggestions or some kind of illustrations regarding uh, stereotypical gender complexities that we as women have to bear with the man in our society um so uh, there is this perception that women should get married and produce babies within the age of 20 or 25 so this is being broken now but at the same time society has this perception that they they are kind of a surveillance lens they they are looking at our lives and uh, judging us and make us realize that we have to do these 
certain roles in order to in order to make ourselves um, a, a kind of normalized uh, representation so yeah. uh, this this is very much obvious in every girls and women's relation in life exactly so this we, is a uh, very uh, we have certain uh, we have a you know a typical social construction in our society that we are bound to follow yeah. as a woman yeah very good anju very impressive and you've put it up very well thank you so much congratulations thank you ma'am thank you so moving on to miss r gomathi if she is ready and i would uh, be happy if she could uh, you know share her uh, ppts yes uh, hi everyone good evening uh, chair and uh, everyone present here uh, on screen thank you so much uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity and uh, yes i would like to share my screen uh, about my presentation uh, just give me a second yes I uh, hope everyone could see my screen. It's visible. It's visible. Yeah. In continue. Okay. Okay. So, uh, amidst of all literature papers, I would like to bring a, a little break for that. So, I think I can uh, give my presentation on English language teaching, as my uh, topic is less research topic. A PhD research topic is related to English language teaching. and i have chosen this uh, meta cognitive awareness uh, for uh, during reading uh, because uh, uh, i felt before i start with my paper i had uh, a kind of uh, thought that uh, students uh, especially the uh, college students first year students they don't have much uh, uh, idea about uh, developing their reading skills because they uh, as i work of uh, in a engineering college where uh, we have uh, students from rural background and they don't have much a uh, habit of uh, uh, reading so that actually motivated me to get into this reading skills and then uh, uh, i thought of proceed uh, proceeding with my research based on the reading theories and uh, among which i i have chosen this meta cognition uh, where because meta cognition is the one that we have to uh, uh, understand that this is becoming aware of our own uh, thinking process especially that is happening during the reading because we do read we, we just have a uh, kind of skimming that is we just read and we just get, gain uh, gather the uh, the main important points alone we will not be bothered about to understand in depth we don't do extensive or i mean intensive reading of the uh, text given so uh, when we uh, what can be done after skimming and scanning and all it we can go for this meta cognition so skimming is actually just gathering the information uh, very uh, superficially whereas scanning is going for the specific information so after that what what will happen when we read uh, what what should be done to better understand the given text so the thing is that we need to understand how a, a paragraph can be read and how far we must have to do the intensive reading so in that case when i was searching for the to trying to understand what, what can be done i just uh, caught up with this um, meta cognition that is uh, thinking of thinking that is becoming aware of our own thought process during the reading so when we become aware of such kind of things then we can definitely better understand the given text so when we have the continuous practice of having this meta cognitive awareness during reading that will definitely help any one of the any any person who have, who wants to develop the reading can easily do uh, can easily understand the text very easily and uh, at the same time uh, can have autonomy on reading because uh, when uh, it, it, there are so many literature review also on uh, reading uh, because uh, in when uh, as far as the academic is concerned we have so many learning difficulties we don't have attention of, uh, sometimes we miss attention of, even from the teachers especially during the online classes because post covid has actually created a kind uh, created a kind of uh, mindset for the students especially from rural background they find it very difficult to focus on the studies they don't uh, have any interest in uh, coming up into the uh, uh, reading business or understanding the text likewise they have a kind of uh, difficulty in doing so so when uh, uh, so how can it be justified so we can have a kind of uh, study over that and that's why i got into this topic so the thing is the main purpose of the study is to bring the spirit uh, among the students especially the first year students to have the uh, to develop the reading skills because as 
as far as the placement and all considered uh, the people wanted to have the they uh, they expect the candidates to have the thinking skills because the continuous usage of the mobile phones the students started losing their thinking skills and they don't have the patience to read or listen and so uh, they don't they could not make any independent choice in uh, or uh, they couldn't make uh, independent uh, decisions so uh, in that case they have to be the st students must be pushed towards the reading skills or reading uh, as i consider that one of uh, reading skills is one of the skills which can help any person to better understand or uh, better think in a way to make the choices independently and then uh, the next thing is that uh, when we read something the students uh, we when we read something we will will not have the 100% concentration yeah, especially when we read some uh, uh, academics we find it very difficult and uh, when we find it very difficult that can be uh, that is uh, the students will also find it very difficult to focus on the studies so uh, when the students are being trained in such a way to become aware of his or her own thoughts during the class of us, especially during the language classes, then definitely that particular student can easily focus on the academics also. So that is the main focus of this paper. That is one is to bring the uh, spirit to improve the reading skill. The other thing is to become aware of the thought process. So what is being done with this paper? How, what kind of methodology is being used? Uh, so uh, that I would like to discuss about that. First thing is that uh, 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 we actually uh, uh, distributed the Masi questionnaire, which is actually a standardized, internationally standardized questionnaire, and it is copyright also. So it is actually done by Kotari, and uh, it is um, it has got uh, 30, uh, 30 plus questions in there, in which we can uh, even check manually, and we can or we can even do the analysis by. Uh, uh, ourselves so that we can check what uh, what level of uh, awareness we have during the reading so that is actually a self uh, examination thing but when uh, we, but we decided to distribute among the students to check to make them to, uh, to help themselves to check their reading skills so when we uh, gave this and we could understand that they don't uh, well, they didn't come up to the level that is being expected in the given uh, Masi questionnaire itself. So we decided to give the reading comprehension passages during the language classes and we help them to help the students in understanding the comprehensive co reading comprehension passages in various aspects like grammar, vocabulary and even sometimes we made the uh, students to understand the recalling or remembering the things and uh, we even helped in uh, doing the giving the inferences. So with these four different parameters have been chosen uh, to check the students, uh, to uh, make the students to become aware of their own uh, reading comprehensive skills, and they were helped to. Uh, they were given so many different tasks, so to help the. I mean, uh, to help themselves to understand that given text. So. Uh, then uh, we were uh, then we could and and, and then uh, I'm, I'm sorry i just left this thing that is we gave uh, after giving the questionnaire we divide uh, we got to know that uh, some stu uh, we can see the difference between the students who have come from urban area and the rural area students they have got uh, urban students have got more number of uh, in, uh, good score in the Masi analysis whereas uh, people from rural background uh, scored only a lit, uh, less number of uh, scores and all and then we decided to divide the whole set we, we have chosen one among the we, we have given actually we have distributed the Masi questionnaire for 300 uh, students and among which we have chosen only the 100 students and which we have decided uh, divided into two different groups one is control group the other one is experimental group to have the qualitative uh, uh, analysis and then um, uh, we, uh, we even given a pretest question uh, to check the uh, uh, reading strategies how do they apply all those things and then we had a uh, continuous classes for 15 hours continuous in a 15 hour session was conducted and then uh, we have even again we gave the Masi questionnaire to check the whether they have improved in their uh, identifying their strategies or not. And likewise, we may that the, this is the methodology we have actually used for this paper. And next is uh, the 
analysis over an analysis when we are and in mamasi analysis we have four different three different categories that is global reading strategy the next one is problem solving strategy and next thing is support reading strategy in which we could see that people have not uh, uh, the people have scored only the 3.31 mean value 3.25 and 3.26 and overall 3.27 but the um, moderate to moderate student must have to score at least 3.5 and above but they have not met with the strategy so they uh, from this value we could understand that the students the, they find it very difficult to derive their own strategies reading strategies so then again uh, we conducted the different classes and we could uh, uh, collect the pre and post test values and we could understand that uh, pre test uh, value the mean value of the pre test and the post test value has improved after so we can see uh, I'm sorry. Either in for the control group, we could see that 3.169, and whereas here 3.302. But when we got, we have taken this, made this an SPSS analysis from the T value and the P value, we could see the uh, there is a significant difference is there. That is the not uh, not not significant difference is there between the values. That is P value and P value. So when it is uh, the same thing is being done with the uh global experimental group that is experimental group were given the special training for for 15 hours of class and which they, we were we were actually discussing about the uh, so many different strategies and so we can see that they have scored better than the um control group of the uh, pre test and post test and next is again the problem solving the same thing we can see here that is uh, uh, control group they didn't have they have the uh, not significant values given over there whereas in the experimental group it is proved that uh, there is a significant difference is there in the uh, relationship and same thing that reflected in the support reading strategy of control group and same thing with the uh, support reading strategy of the experimental so finally what we have this uh, we have uh, we have got the conclusion is that when the students are being trained in such a way after giving various different strategies and web after giving them uh, support by the teachers or the environment the students will definitely focus on their reading skills and if they are supported with the various strategies of uh, Thing, then definitely they can easily improve their uh, awareness during the year thing. So this current study is actually reporting that Marcy analysis has helped the learners who actually became aware of the their own uh, aware during their reading and the findings also show that the learners have the tendency towards the three strategies that is global reading strategies support reading strategies and problem solving strategies this means that l2 learners prefer to do uh, the reading with the metacognitive awareness and there and also there is a difference uh, significant difference between the pre and post test of the experimental group when it is compared to the control group so for further uh, things it, uh, for further research we can have uh, we can even derive new strategies and we need to find out why the why the other strategies are not used to in developing the reading skills so uh, reading uh, skills must be uh, must be uh, given to the learners especially l2 learners because they can gain more confidence and they can become uh, uh, autonomy on uh, making their own decisions they can become very self motivated person and they can improve their self confidence as well because when uh, when we can uh, we can even see the difference among the people among the students who, with whom we have chosen for the control group and experimental group the control group students find it uh, even uh, difficult uh, even after uh, the con uh, listening uh, control group uh, even after completing one year of course they, they still find it difficult but the people who are uh, specially trained to become aware of their metacognition metacognitive strategies they co we could see the difference between the uh, how the students are actually trying to understand the thing and at the same time they also come out with their own ideas in writing also we can see the reflection of reading uh, in changing of their perspectives the way they understand the uh, uh, academics or or uh, any given text and uh, they they even have uh, decided uh, they even have uh, started improving their passion towards reading also so this is how uh, the uh, student when the uh, 
uh, when this study actually helped the uh, have ha helped the researchers to identify that if the students are being continuously motivated if they are given uh, enough uh, ideas to improve their uh, strategies to improve their reading skills then definitely that will help them to uh, improve their reading skill which will reflect in writing as well as in the speaking so uh, when uh, when uh, when the engineering students especially they go out after completing their courses after the, getting the job they go out and they find it very difficult to speak uh, because we continuously get the uh, kind of in, uh, input from the recruiters that they uh, find students from rural background finding it very difficult uh, they could not produce and uh, reproduce the sentences and they could not answer even the simple questions likewise but the students who have the habit of uh, uh, to do two different activities that is one is reading as well as listening so those students could easily respond to the uh, people and they could frame their own sentences they could communicate easily they gain more confidence they could uh, they they even evolve as a better leaders so uh, so reading plays a very important role and when the students are being provided with the perfect uh, uh, various facilities to improve their reading skills then definitely they can also improve their proficiency level in english language and they can even change their perspectives towards the responsibilities they have so uh, so thank you for patiently listening to my uh, presentation hope i made my uh, uh, presentation clear Yes, Gomti. Uh, quite interesting. I found your uh, presentation interesting. Rather, the topic was also interesting. Uh, you've been teaching in the engineering college for how long? Uh, this is my eleventh year of experience oh. in engineering college. So, uh, do you know what was the reason that uh, you know uh, this English learning uh, was enforced in engineering colleges? It is not actually enforced on English. It has become a kind of essentiality of engineering college. Exactly, but which it started off years back. Earlier than that, it wasn't in the curriculum, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, what was the reason? Because uh, in, uh, it, one of the main reasons is that uh, engineering students they get placed in various companies, even sometimes in MNCs they get placed, multinational companies. So they interface with the people uh, from other states, other countries. So English is the uh, one of the uh, source. Through which they can get connected with the people, so it creates a good network connectivity among the people. So, so this so, was the reason that uh, yes, it came, it took uh, to be one of the most important components in the curriculum. Is that yes. so? One of the reasons. Yes, and the other reason was also that um, Gomati, since you've spoken so well and you have a very extensive experience of teaching in the engineering college, mm -hmm. students of engineering, they lack the efficiency of writing applications as well. Yeah. You spoke about the reading. Well, uh, reading alone will be it. Uh, will reading alone be able to substitute writing, speaking, and listening skills? Or you mean to say that reading would enhance and strengthen the other three skills as well? Uh, I I uh, I say that it will strengthen the other skills. I can't say that reading will alone will help them to do it because uh, it can't uh, be the substitution of the other three skills. But yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, of course. But but yes, I, I do agree. I am in consent to what you said that if you are a good, uh, if someone is an avid reader, definitely the person is going to improve his writing, his listening and speaking skills as well, right? Yes. So yes. I'm very impressed by your presentation, Gomati. All the Thank best you. and you. keep growing. So Thank moving you. on to the next one, we have Trika Amit. Trika Amit. Good evening, everyone. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Um, am I audible to everyone there? Yes, you're audible. Would you Would you okay. like to uh, share your slides? Uh, no, ma'am. I'll just narrate my paper. Okay, fine. Please go. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, very warm welcome to all the participants. My uh, topic of research is special education. Uh, today's challenges that we are facing nowadays in imparting special education in India, and what are the best practices we can adopt to make it to uh, to make it more strengthened and to make it more uh, impressive. So, um, special education is an international issue. And uh, um, Indian education has no exception. In many countries around the world, the education of 
all the children in public schools, including those with disabilities, remains unsolved. While education of all the children is mandated by law now and considered it as a basic human right in many nations, the current implementation status varies. India, for example, after obtaining independence from British rule, enacted a number of laws and programs to help its residents and with disabilities. Now, India has a legal requirement that all children be educated in schools. However, despite this, millions of children with disabilities continue to remain out of the school or receive little or very low or no education at all. The reason for this is the existence of few problems and challenges uh, now we are facing in the society for implementing the strategic plans to impart special education in India. Children with vision impairments, hearing impairments, mental retardation and behavioral and moreover emotional issues are all served by special schools, which are also called as in inclusive education. The number of special schools for children with mental retardation and other kind of disabilities has steadily expanded in the recent years. In 2004, there were only just 237 special schools in India for children with disabilities, all of which were run by the Ministry of Education. And also due to the efforts of parents, uh, professionals, educators, and other activities, the regulations of special schools resulted in a significant increase in the number of children and now the youth with disabilities being educated in regular schools. Now there are more than 2,500 schools catered to the needs of children with special needs and learning difficulties such as uh, dyslexia, attention def deficit disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and cognitive disabilities. Moreover, the efforts are still made to integrate these children into the mainstream school environment. Now, talking about the challenges now we are facing, education and special education in India face many unique and daunting challenges. One difficulty for the Indian educational system is how to bring special education and even regular education to the poor, lower caste and rural regions. The shortage of special education teachers is yet another challenge. And for the population of school age children with disabilities, India does not have enough degree programs in place for the number of teachers needed. Along with this issue comes the need for teacher education programs in special education that communicate research based strategies and treatment to teacher candidates. Another challenge for Indian special education is the need for parents and families to have better information and improved services. Many parents do not have access to quality information. Some have to travel a long distances to a hospital that can diagnose their children. In addition, certain cultural perspective make understanding disability issues very hard for parents, especially those who are available for letting their students to learn all these things. Special schools are private schools that work with special populations and are often located in urban areas. By missionaries, these early schools often serve the blind and deaf orphans or outcast. And as for the Rehabilitation Council of India, these are allowed to apply over government support. Nevertheless, the small number of special schools does not begin to serve the population of students with disabilities. Now, so far as the comparison of our special education system in India with the abroad is concerned, we would like to cater the cases of, few cases of America, China, and Thailand. We have to go strictly as per the strategic plans, while the United States has one of the most ex extensive special education system in the world, uh, all other countries' systems for education kids with disabilities are still taking chances and are still improving. Under the Education for All Handicapped Children Act, the United States has guaranteed a free and appropriate education for all the students with the disabilities. So far as Indian special education system is concerned, there is a lack of consistency a bit from school to school, city to city, and province to province. So India also must have better plans 
and strategies, including improved policies like United States. Moreover, special education in China is quite similar to what the United States look alike. With regards to special education, 